we don't give a damn about energy. What we want is power. We want power in the cleanest, densest possible form, and we want it 24-7. Energy is the ability to do work. Power is the rate at which work gets done. Put another way, energy is an, um, an amount, power is a rate, and rates are more telling than amounts. We don't care what energy is, we care a lot about what energy provides. And what energy provides when we put it through a, an engine or a turbine or a fuel cell is power. Look at these lights. Now, I don't know exactly what the power mix or generation mix in New York is. The electricity here could be produced from a nuclear power plant or a coal-fired power plant. Might be oil, doubtful. Could be wind, could be solar. I don't really care. And I bet none of you really care either. What you really care about, what I really care about, is that when I go to the wall switch and I flip the wall switch, the power comes on. Think about, uh, think about it this way. Energy is what you put in the tank. Power is what you get when you goose the throttle. Think of a car. Now, we could put, for all we care, we could put Hostess Twinkies or cupcakes or marbles or sawdust in the fuel tank. That doesn't matter. We don't really care about that part of it. We really care when we push the accelerator and that that power is immediately available. Power is what allows us to drive to Waco or make the toast or fly to Paris. The form of the energy that we use to create the power matters ultimately to us very little. Think about rates when you buy a car. How many people care, well, how many ask the dealer, well, how many gallons of fuel does it hold? I've never asked that question. I want to know the rates. How many miles per gallon does it get? How many miles over the posted speed limit will it go? <laughs> power is a rate. Power, one watt per second is a rate. The entire course of human history is really the pursuit of power. Whether we're talking about Hannibal using elephants in warfare in Europe, or we're talking about Patton using tanks uh, to gallop across France during World War II, or we're thinking about the Saturn V rocket that carried astronauts to the moon and back. The, the Saturn V rocket produced 160 million horsepower. Or maybe it's this, uh, my, my iPhone, where I use just a few milliwatts of electricity to text my wife, good morning, this morning. Love you, miss you. We want power. The problem is that much of our discussion, and particularly our discussion about renewable energy, is completely wrong-headed. Most people, I believe, don't understand the fundamental differences between energy and power. And in particular, when we're talking about renewable energy, it is in actuality of the wrong phrase. What we want is renewable power. The word power itself connotes control. And yet we hear endlessly about renewable energy. Oh, we need more renewable energy. Well, without energy storage, we cannot turn the renewable energy that we get from the, from the wind and the sun into renewable power. And that, I think, is creating a basic disconnect in our discussions about energy and power systems these days because people don't understand these basic points. I don't use... PowerPoint <laughs> gives me a rash. But if I were going to use any slide from my book and project it, I would use a table that I've, I've generated in the book where it lists the top 20 countries ranked by GDP and the top 20 countries ranked by electricity generation. The correlation is so close, it is truly remarkable. The countries that are able to produce lots of electric power are the ones that are wealthy. The ones that do not and cannot produce lots of electric power cannot, will not 
generate wealth. They will not, cannot create a modern economy. Now, this little tutorial I'm giving here may seem pedantic and for some, and particularly for the scientists and the, and the truly scientifically literate folks that are here. But I think that it is, this is a key problem today in our discussions about our energy and power systems because our politicians and the electorate are overwhelmingly illiterate when it comes to science. And they're overwhelmingly innumerate. This lack of basic physics, understanding of basic physics, combined with this inability to understand the tyranny of big numbers. And we are facing, make no mistake, the tyranny of big numbers when we talk about energy and power systems. A quick aside, global energy consumption on an average day is 226 million barrels of oil equivalent. That's 27 times the average oil production of Saudi Arabia. We're told we should quit using hydrocarbons, okay? We get 200 million of our 226 million barrels of oil equivalent uh, energy consumption per day from coal, oil, and natural gas. So let's quit using coal, oil, and natural gas, but you're going to have to find the equivalent energy production of 23 and a half Saudi Arabia's per day. And all of that energy will have to be carbon free. Now we're told we have to change our energy and power systems be for many reasons. You've heard them all, I'm sure. Global warming, this is the, the issue for, for Al Gore and a lot of other people. Oil causes terrorism. This is one we've heard repeatedly from, from both the right and the left. Oil is bad. We've particularly heard this over the last few weeks because of the, the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. We use too much. We are sinful because we use too much, and if only we use less energy than the people in Brazil, Bangladesh, Angola would have more. Or there is, of course, the argument that we need to be energy independent, which if you listen to the president's speech just a few days ago when he was at an ethanol plant in Missouri promoting ethanol, he used that very phrase. We've heard all these things recently and, uh, and, and as reasons, as rationales why we need to pivot our massive uh, energy and power delivery systems to something else that is wind powered, solar powered, unobtainium powered, you name it. <laughs> so that's why I wrote Power Hungry. I, want, I, I needed, after I wrote Gusher of Lies, I needed to, to, to analyze these discussions about renewable energy. And, now, my friend Tessa Shanks brought this lovely poster, my book. There, it's for sale back here. You don't have to read it. You just have to buy it. <laughs> there are three basic points in, uh, basic themes in Power Hungry. The first in the, is the most important. Hydrocarbons are here to stay. We can badmouth coal, oil, natural gas all day long. The fact is nine out of ten units of energy, nine out of ten units of power that we consume come from hydrocarbons. They will be with us for decades to come. Second major theme, the myths of green energy are largely just that, myths. Mm -hmm. Finally, the fuels of the future are, can be described as in to in, natural gas to nuclear. These are the fuels of the future.